Basketball is my life. I have nothing else. This is incredible. This is the best yeah. game football I've ever heard. Shooters. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> Shooters, a basketball podcast. Let's go. All right, episode 12 of Shooters. We just had a great chat with Sunday Detch. Shout out to that man. Uh, first time sort of officially meeting him for myself. Obviously, Jack and him go back, but great fella. Um, he asked us some questions. He pumped our tires. Um, how's your week been? Besides from that, of course. Wow, wow. Well, we'll let people know. We're going to talk here for five, ten minutes about the weekend, and then we're going to have that interview uh, for the last, I think, about 30 minutes of this. Uh, I've been doing... Good off the court, a little frustrated on the court, obviously, 0-2, and, and we lost some close ones on the weekend against Cairns and Adelaide, who Sunday Dad plays for. But um, other than that, man, it's Christmas time. My people are healthy. I got to see Beth in Adelaide. So all of that stuff's doing really well. What about yourself? Love it. Good summary. Um, not too much for me besides from, I saw a three-hour movie. Do you know what that is? Do you, can you guess what that yes, is? Yes, Avatar. Avatar yeah. how, how was it? How was it? Give us a review. Look, I didn't realize it went for three hours, but it was a very good movie. Um, and I had to remind myself what Avatar even was, to be honest. I was like, are these? Yeah. Are they like the real people now? Are they in like pods? I didn't really get it to begin with, but yep. after a refresher, very good. Would recommend. Nice. Mm. Would you recommend going to the movies or waiting till it comes out on Netflix? I do always enjoy a movie experience. Get your ice cream, get whatever else you want. Actually, ice cream is the best part of a movie. Don't, don't tell me otherwise. Um, yep. Yeah. And just besides from that, some Christmas prep. Just, it's, a, it's a big week for everyone. So, yeah, that's it. How, how's the Christmas prep been going? All, all presents ticked off. Done. Nice. Done. Love to hear it. That's, um, you just said a wild statement though that we need a, a replay back on because I'm not letting you get away with it. Ice cream is the best part of the movies. No, it's the popcorn and the slushy, Darren. The popcorn and the slushy. The slushy. Um, oh, I, I, look, the frozen Coke. I don't, agree, I don't agree with you, but that's fine. You're allowed to enjoy your frozen Coke and popcorn. Wow, we have our first mm. ever uh, beef on the shooter's pod here. We'll have to put up a vote. Mm. Um, quick, but we'll, we'll yeah we'll uh, settle later. Quick segue: We didn't agree there, but what we can agree on are these lovely Rode microphones. How how good are we sounding? I oh, hope we're sounding yes. good. Yeah, hopefully, guys, we're sounding quality. We look quality, mm. and that's all that matters. I wanna um, you've made a new addition to your game, the shooting sleeve, Jack. Yes, the shooting sleeve. You've got this. Have you got some stats there? Yes, yes, I do. Um, my good friend Harvey from the office. He didn't want credit, but uh, he just randomly looked over my desk today, and he's just like, "You want some numbers with Jack's shooting sleeve?" First on and off. I'm like, "Do I ever want some numbers?" So, you've only won it twice, right? Yes, two games. But that's fine. It doesn't matter if it's a small sample size. They're still facts. So, with no sleeve, you are shooting forty five point four percent from the field. With a sleeve, you've bumped up to 50% from the field. Just, wow. Just putting that out there. Um, he's also got free throw percentage, which he did follow up with. I actually don't think this is accurate, but I don't care. It sounds good. Um, you apparently haven't missed a free throw since switching to a sleeve. I'm not sure if that's correct. Wow. Well, well, we'll rock with it 100% <laughs> with the sleeve. We'll take it. Yeah, so I, I also I have a request on my end. Can you? I'm not sure how possible it is, but... Can you make sure the shooting sleeve matches your uniform color? Is that okay? <laughs> Listen, I was, uh, that's a funny story because I was talking to one of my good friends before the Cairns game, uh, Ben Eyre, uh, little Benny, backup point guard for uh, Cairns. And he said, you know, make sure you're not one of those guys that wears black on the road. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to be one of those guys. Because I'll give you guys all the quick backstory is I actually landed on my elbow in the week during oh. practice and hurt my elbow. So I uh, popped my bursa sack, which is like the little fluid thing in your elbow. Right. And so I land, landed on the ground, hit my elbow, and then kept training, looked down about 15 minutes later, and I had a legitimate tennis ball mm, okay. coming out of my elbow. So it is, it's not a fashion statement. Mm. It is, yeah, it's a practical statement. So I'll probably only wear it one more game. Uh, unless I go crazy against the Luara and have a career high, this will probably be my last game. That's all right. Uh, you may yeah, as well, so, yeah. It, it was good while it lasted. I was going to ask what, what brought it on, whether it was a fashion thing, but that's all right. We got to the bottom of it. And, um, Shout out Ben Air on Media Day ages ago. It feels like ages ago in Darwin Blitz. He was one of the first ever people that talked to me about the Shooters Pod. He's just like, "Hey, 
you're the you're the guy doing that podcast with Jack McVeigh. And then I'm like, yep, that's me. And then he's just like, I love it already. You guys are like trendsetters or something to those words. Hey, if it's yeah, I don't know if he said that, but it sounds good. So shout out to him. Well, there you go. Shout out to Ben Eyre, and we ha- do have to give a special shout out to one other person. Yes, Jack is for for everyone watching. Jack is wearing a wonderful shooters custom made t shirt. He's so shout out to Jess Radford. She got she got it made for a Christmas present for Darren and me. Uh, shooters, a shooters podcast shirts. Um, sheesh, we might have to go into the the, the merch line yes. in, in a year or two. Who knows? Uh, but and Jess Radford will be our supplier. Um, mm. for all the goods, but they look sharp. They feel sharp. She needs her like signature or initials down the bottom, like how every artist does. Um, I was gonna say because once you said that, it, it was almost like you need a plug of a way to people to buy shooters t-shirts. But we don't have that yet. But it might be coming, I guess. <laughs> maybe, maybe in a year, like exclusive, like three shirts first in to get them. Um, we're gonna keep this one short mm. because we got the awesome, awesome interview with Sunday Death, which you guys will love. We're talking about, you know, we're talking about Ian Clark coming in, his special blog, which you'll hear more about. But we're gonna do our shout out for the week. Uh, Darren, lead us off. Well, mine might be. Um, I hope you didn't get the same one because it was a pretty obvious one, but I, c- I couldn't look past what Mitch Creek and Derek Walton did. Um, if for anyone that don't didn't see or didn't yeah watch, Mitch Creek just dropped a lazy 46 points and in the same game, double overtime, Derek Walton had 45, which one of those is pretty absurd. Two of them in the same game is just, it's wild, especially for the NBL. Um, I didn't even get to watch it. I was driving in my car and when I got to my location, my brother texted me saying, hey, you're probably driving, but Mitch Creek has 45. And I'm like, oh, that sounds, uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> no, that game was unbelievable. We got a couple, uh, couple oh, yes. commentators uh, saying it's the greatest game of all time in the NBL. We got a couple people saying that. Um, which I didn't get to watch it because we were on the flight to Adelaide, um, sadly. So I was the same as you, but uh, big praise. It was, yeah, it, it was a bloody, it was a, it was a great game. Who are you hopping up this week? Well, I'm just going to, I love the young fellas and, you know, giving them the props. Michael Harris had a great yes. game, um, you know, helped them get a, a, get a big win on the road against Cairns. And he played a pivotal role in making shots, bringing the energy and having some fun. But we do have... Some uh, some recommended shout outs. Yes, I almost forgot about that until you um, made a comment there. I was like, I thought you were going with the shout outs, but some fan inputs yeah. for the hype up section. Um, so we have, I'm going to start from the bottom. We've got three comments here, but um, from Ali. She's a loyal listener of the show, very, um, very tuned, very hype. She hypes us up a lot. So she's got Keanu yeah. Pinder, Ray John Tucker, Owen Foxwell. Those were her three. Love they all, they definitely all deserve it. Love the Owen Fox watch shout out just because of I watched I I didn't see that game as I said but he took some really nice charges down the end. Um, Sean McDonald gets two shout outs. Your man. Wow. There you go, Shawnee Mac. Shawnee Mac. Um, Michael Harris from Perth. So that's my brother that agreed with that one on you. There you same, go. Same same. Um, can I say about Michael Harris? Has a very nice elevation to his jump shot. So tell him I said that. Yep, there you go. I've got you. Another one of your men, Chris Levick, doesn't get enough credit, Credit says Miss Kelly Reid. Well, I 100% agree. He was a beast again, plays hard, awesome teammate. Couldn't ask for anything more. Is he next door? Maybe you should give him some love. Is he like... Uh, he's upstairs, uh, so he okay. can't hear right now, but uh, right. I'll give him some love after the podcast. Give him some love. Lastly, Josh Duwatch as well. Melbourne, young fella. He doesn't get too much burn, but hopefully in the future, we see lots of him. So love the input from the fans out there. Yeah, appreciate you guys for sending in your messages because we love the feedback. We want to hear it more. Mm. And uh, who doesn't go- love to give some love to uh, some people that have done a great job this week? Perfectly said. All right, Sunday to Ditch. As we said, great chat. We want you guys to hear it. Give us your feedback. Give us who you want to see on the show as well. Uh, what do you think of the Sunday chat? You can lead us into it. Well, there you go. It was awesome. It was rolling. There's no more that needs to be said. Check it out. Enjoy. Awesome guy. Bright future and bright currently doing awesome things. Uh, but yeah, Darren and I, first guest, first interview. It was awesome. Yes, it was. Here's our chat with Sunday Dutch. Well, 
before we get started, um, how do I get my hands on one of those t-shirts, Chad? <laughs> one of these t-shirts? Um, no, yeah. so Jess Radford, she made them for us for Christmas. Crazy. All right, it's a special episode. Our first ever guest from the Adelaide 36ers, Sunday Detch. Um, we're just honored to have you, and it's honestly, me and Jack were just talking about it before. We're excited to bring someone else in. Shooters has just been a two-man band so far, but how are you doing, Sunday? Yeah, I'm doing good, guys. Um, obviously, I've seen some of your work that you've done. I, I love it. I think, you know, basketballers, especially in the NBL, don't have, you know, um, such a platform where you guys provide and just and just talk about stuff in life. So it's been awesome, and I'm honored, honored to be here. Wow, the, the hype up early. We appreciate yeah. you. Um, coming off, we'll, we'll hit you with some basketball questions to start. Coming off a great win against me, uh, the <laughs> Jack Jumpers, but you played yeah. a great game. Uh, how you feeling? How's the body pull up? How was uh, the weekend? 2-0. Uh, and o. Yeah, look, it was, it was a huge weekend for us. Um, you know, I think we're, we're kind of struggling there for a little bit on a three-game slide. So just to refocus and get some big wins at home is always key. Like, as you know, Jack, like winning at home is everything, you know, I think just for the city, for the fans and just for your overall confidence. So we, um, you guys have had our number for a while, so it was good to get up on you guys there. Um, so yeah, no, it felt good. We've got a good vibe around the group at the moment. I had a good session today and Ian gets in this week. So yeah, really excited to get this rolling and get second half, a better second half of the year than we did the front half. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk a bit about Ian a bit later on. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us once again. And I also I love the timing of this because as you said, you guys just played each other. Um, we're all about pumping each other up on this show. Yeah. I just want you to uh, say one thing about each other's game that you most admire. Just putting you on the spot here. I just want to hear some love for the other one. I'll start. I'll start us yeah, off because on. mine's easy. Sunday <laughs> is hands down best guard post defender in the league. Yeah, so <laughs> people say so when so when Sunday gets the switch, he takes pride in it. He's clamped. He's got the quick hands, and even Sunday, Sunday will say it. He'll let you let you know best defend, best post defender in the league, hands down. Oh, appreciate it, Jack. No, it's um, look, I've definitely taken pride of uh, you know my post defense over the years, and I'm known for picking the bigs' pockets uh, every now and then down there because you know they think it's a mismatch. So. I appreciate the shout out. Um, he's an elite left hand finisher around the basket. So he's a righty, but trust me, if he's he's going left eighty to ninety percent of the time. So um, you know, when we play together in Adelaide, that's one thing that I noticed he worked on a lot and you know, obviously just seeing the progression over the years has been unreal. And yeah, look, he's he's pretty much unstoppable going left. So uh quick quick yeah. scouting report when they call out four and Jack's <laughs> dribbling on that left side, cut off his left hand. There you go. There you Damn, go. Left hand exposing was, the secrets. I was genuinely, genuinely impressed with the specifics of both your answers. I thought, I thought Jack, you'd just be like, "Yeah, I like his defense." And Sunday, I thought you might just be like, "Yep, yeah, good shooter." But you guys went in. I yeah, love that. Of course. That was good. Of I course. Spent a lot of time together. Yeah, people. Some people don't know that we were uh, NBL Central champions together. If uh, yep. you're listening, the the, the duo. <laughs> Shout out the Rockets. Love that, love that. I didn't, yeah, I was gonna say I didn't, I didn't know that, but maybe I should have done a bit more research. But there you go. Come on, Darren, you, you gotta come to the full <laughs> Arsenal if you're gonna do a podcast. Sorry, yeah. Sunday, you're, you're our first guest. Maybe next time you come on, I'm gonna give you like your full backstory for you just to <laughs> let you know that I've done my research. But hey, we're, we're gonna grow from this, so you're oh, our yeah. special number one, that's for sure. You mentioned mm. him earlier. How are you feeling about Ian Clark? That's a big signing, obviously, yeah. championship uh, quality player. Uh, he gets in later this week. You said, how, how's the boys feeling about that? How are you feeling about that? Man, I'm pumped. Um, you know, I think from all accounts, speaking to the guys from Sydney, you know, I know a few guys there. Like, as you know, the NBL is just such a small league and everyone knows each other. So all the guys are saying what a legend he is, you know, on and off the court. Um, and one, you know, guy that you'd obviously want on your team in terms of just that, you know, his shooting capabilities, his on-the-court presence. But... Also, just being a veteran and being there, um, I think it's something that we need to kind of get us over the hurdle. Uh, as we talked about earlier, we're in that little lull there for a bit and hopefully we snapped out of it now and can kind of just infuse Ian seamlessly into the group. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it, man. And I think that just completes our roster. Um, where I think we, we've got enough as it is, but as you know, when it comes to finals, like you always need just a little edge and a little something. And, you know, he helped Sydney greatly last year. And, I actually want to ask you, Jack, obviously you played against him. Um, what's what's your, you know, take on me in and kind of playing that final series? And I mean, obviously we, we don't talk about it enough, man. Like 
you guys did a freaking phenomenal job um, playing all through last year and getting to finals. And then, you know, I think being your first year, your, your inaugural year, obviously, I didn't think you were going to win, just to be fair, because yeah. just the right power and, and you had some injuries down there. I think you were sick in one of the games. So, um, yeah, you came down to that stretch and just Sydney were too powerful. But I just wanted to, yeah, get your thoughts on him and, and what you thought his game was like. No, nah, for, for sure. Like, he was kind of like the dagger in the heart of their team where it was like, you know, we're playing with them. We're, we're tied with five minutes to go and he's just letting it fly in transition, always making the right play, doing vet things that not many dudes in our league can do at such a high level. You know, like you, you're playing great defense. You get a kick out one meter behind the three and instead of it, yeah. you know, bricking off the ring and you're running the other way, feeling incredible about yourself, he's making it. And heads are dropping a tiny bit when you're taking the ball out of the net. And so he kind of plays with that swagger, that little bit of on the court. You know, there's something about playing against those NBA vets. Even, you know, they may not be at that level in terms of when they're playing in their prime. But, you know, they, they've got a little something about them that that you feel on a basketball court. You know, when Bogut was here, you know who Bogut is. You know who Ian Clark is. When those dudes yeah. are around... You can see they lift guys, they bring guys together. And he, I think he was the key to, I mean, was Sydney. Obviously, Sydney had a lot of great guys last year. But when you, as you said, man, he's that little edge that kicked them over, you know, yeah. the reason they didn't lose a playoff game. He's a big part of it. For sure. Shout out to Ian Clark. I love the, um, I was just going to say, I feel like people probably forget some of the big shots he made. Like, there was some huge moments where he just kind of stepped in. And as you said, he feels like that perfect sort of, uh, veteran guide is to, I guess, take teams over the top. So, if you guys get what you what Sydney got last year, um, it's going to be pretty exciting. It's going to yeah. be pretty exciting. And um, I will say, uh, we had Robert Franks on one of our NBL uh, podcasts around like I don't know three weeks ago, and he was already talking about Ian Clark. So, did you guys know anything was happening like three weeks ago, or just give <laughs> us an inside scoop? Um, look, I think uh, <laughs> there's always rumors, you know, and and like we talked about the. NBL circle is just so small that, you know, if you hear it from one or two people, it's probably true. Um, so, yeah, his name was floating around as someone that, you know, could potentially be interested, be available. Because it's one thing to reach out, you know, it's another thing for them to kind of accept the offer and then be ready to come in at a specific time, you know, be ready to join the team at a specific date. So I think the back end of stuff was being, um, you know, being hashed out. But in terms of just the type of player we wanted, he, he was he fit the bill. You know, so we're really pumped about him, and I know, I know the coaches had a, a few guys up there on the on their whiteboard that they were looking at. Um, but yeah, he was definitely at top of the list, and, and yeah, we're pumped. I think, like Jack said, he's just a veteran, a guy that just makes the right plays, hits big shots, and you know, we're we're actually looking forward to playing with him because with that group of guys, we've got a you know bunch of experienced guys, bunch of young guys, and you know guys in between. So he'll he'll fit perfectly. Who were those names on the whiteboard? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, I just, I'm just like we've got more players on. We needed some insight, yeah. scoop. But no, I'll let you be. Um, just to round out the basketball questions, unless you had anything else, um, Jack. I was just going to ask, how are you feeling about your team now? Like, do you finally feel like this is obviously the, I don't know, the final piece? Ian Clark coming in. Like, is it just a good feeling that there's probably going to be, well, fingers crossed, nothing more major that's going to happen, and you guys can find your feet, get some bit of form. You already won a few in a row now. Like, do you reckon this is the sort of like the final step in theory? I mean, good question, you know, and I think uh, we can theorize like all we want, but until we hit the court with him, you know, you just, you, you don't know how that fit is going to be. And, you know, obviously we, we think he's going to fit great, but it's, it's how long that's going to take and, you know, how quickly we're going to gel because um, we've got a lot of games coming up in succession. And uh, the vibe around the group's been good, you know, all throughout, um, you know, since obviously the, the last uh, hurdle we had as a team, but um, as a playing group, you know, a lot of the narrative is, is through the media. Uh, it's not coming from us. We, we come in and we work every day, you know, and we know what we need to do to win. And uh, we haven't been on the mark uh, as of late uh, before these two games. And, you know, we felt like the first 14 games, we, we weren't where we wanted to be. And I think it was a big reality check. So the coaches came in and had a, a week one of training camp mentality um, this past week, which we felt helped us prepare a lot and, and it showed in our defensive intensity. And, you know, I think Jack can attest to that because they, they play a similar brand, you know, tough, hard nose up and in. And that's something we want to just embody. So we, we hope that 
it's a big reset for us and getting Ian in will, you know, help us just stabilize the ship going forward. But yeah, definitely the boys are on a high at the moment. Yeah, that's epic. It's it's cool to hear because the thing about the Adelaide 36s and this current roster is, you know, you got Macker and DJ leading it who are great dudes all the way down to DPs like Nick Marshall and it's great dudes all the way through. And and that's sometimes all you need. When you're in a hump, you want to be rocking with great dudes and when you're thriving, you want to be rocking with great dudes and, and that's how you kind of find that edge uh, to towards the back of the season. Just quietly, both Adelaide and Tassie, eight and eight. So you guys are sitting right behind each other and in front of each other so yeah. <laughs> so it'll be fun to see how, you, how these things play out and who um yeah gets on top towards the end of the season but sunday service this is this is what we were um <laughs> yeah we like to we like the idea of just sort of targeting something specific about you and as soon as we um knew about this page we were both very intrigued and even some of the people in the office were talking about this um in nbl hq so oh, tell us what cool. it is like we both um have been on it we've read a bit but yeah from your your eyes what is it yeah look i mean i appreciate you guys reading it and kind of having a look and jumping on board it started in the off season uh, for me. I think um, throughout, you know, my career and, and younger life, I've, I've always just been an avid learner and someone who loves to read and and write. Um, and I've written bits and pieces here and there, but a lot of it uh, came from just like, you know, the stigma of being an athlete and being like, oh well, I'm not really an academic. I'm an athlete, if that makes sense. And um, you know, I was really passionate about it as when I was younger and. As the years went on, I think the focus just shifted to 100% basketball. Um, and then, yeah, this past off season, I kind of just refound my passion for writing again. And it was actually one of my teammates when I was playing in New Zealand that was like, man, like, you have to share your ideas, you know. And a lot of it just came from, you know, just maybe I can help someone, you know. If it's one person, then, I, you know, I've done my job. And someone who's, you know, battling through something, some adversity that I've been through that, I can give a bit of insight um, or like, you know, Jack and you were saying earlier, just uplifting, uh, uplifting athletes, you know, which is something we don't celebrate enough. And, and Jack actually wrote a really cool piece about that the other day um, and just athletes journeys along the way. So, yeah, it came about earlier this year in New Zealand and I've kind of just tried to write, you know, bits and pieces as I've gone through my travels as you know, I've done a lot of traveling this year and, and kind of just, yeah, uh, fueling that as I go on some weeks, I'm really good. Other weeks I haven't been really good, so just trying to find that balance. Yeah, that's that's cool. It's cool to hear you like how you started it. What do you think it was in New Zealand that really caught your love again and got you inspired? And was it a moment or just having spare time, or what was it that really got you to say, "Wow, I love doing this again," and I, I'm feeling inspired to write and and continue to learn? Yeah, man, awesome. Um, a lot of it just stemmed from uh, reading consistently again. Uh, you know, I've always been an avid reader. Um, I have my bouts where I go, you know, reading from three, four hours a day to not touching a book for, you know, a month. So just finding some consistency in that really just fueled, you know, uh, a lot of thoughts going on in my head and putting it onto paper. And um, uh, my friend Ryan was actually just going through a tough, tough spell on the court um, at the time. And we went on a trip to Queenstown. Um, beautiful part of the world if you guys haven't been or whoever hasn't been. So we went on a trip for three days and just got to know him a bit more. And, and my partner, Charlotte was there. I uh, was us three and um, we FaceTime his partner often as well, which was awesome. And, and just opened up, you know, just chatting to him and going through our different experiences. And I'm just like, Oh wow. Like I've, I've been through that. Um, you know, this, this is how I dealt with it. Maybe you can look at it from this angle. And then I kind of just sat and talk, like thought about it. I'm like, man, like, feel like I'm a vet now, you know, and just kind of have that realization, like all these years of just climbing the basketball that I'm like, I've got a ton of experiences, you know, and um, and he was just like, man, like you should start sharing your writing because I just showed him a few that I'd written about, um, you know, meditation, how reading, having journaling and just having a process of things helped me uh, in my career. And yeah, it just went about from there. And, and one thing led to another. And I Started a, a blog that week, which is Sunday service. And yeah, it just started from there. I love it. I love it. And this actually goes to both of you. Like, I feel like both of you, yeah, share your thoughts and stuff as professional athletes, like really well. And just coming from a um, a fan's perspective, it's super cool just to just to read it. Um, read what you guys are going through, what you guys are thinking. And um, just if I do say so myself, they're, they're very wise words from what I've read from both of you. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, 
Yeah, just as a fan's perspective. Um, and I will say that I've always struggled to get into reading, but um, so thank you for the Sunday service for being like not really, really a long amount of words. Like um, it's actually, yeah, it's an enjoyable read. Like they're not too long for me as well. So just putting that out there, uh, it's enjoyable just going through them. No, I appreciate that, Darren. Um, that was actually intentional. I think one minute reads, um, the last one was two minutes, I must confess. So apologize to whoever's, you know, on my case about that. But yeah, like short one minute snippets, you know, just to either inspire someone or just provoke a thought that they can go in and kind of, you know, challenge themselves to think deeper about it or read a book about it, you know. So I think that's that was my meaning and, you know, purpose behind it. And, and thanks for picking up on that. Mm. No worries at all. So you've been doing it for a little bit now. Have you got a favorite post? Something like right now that you're really proud of or just starting or something that, that you've read and you've gone, wow, like I've, I've, I've progressed in this or I, this is something I'm proud to put out? Um, I don't really have a favorite per se at the moment. Um, I guess I, I the one I wrote after coming back from the World Cup um, World Cup qualifiers in uh, Tunisia was, I think, you know, probably would be up there um, in terms of upper end of the Sunday service um, posts. Just, I think a lot of that was just realizing who I was, my roots, and kind of connecting with Africa again um, was it was a big key for me. And, and I think that kind of, yeah, just not more so about the writing, but just more so me personally um, at that stage in transition was probably yeah, one of the more, you know, self-discovery moments for me. And, and yeah, and I'm looking forward to heading back again. I can't wait for the February fever window where we head back and play one more round before, you know, potentially qualifying for the World Cup. So, yeah, I mean, long story, I guess, yeah, that's probably one of the favourites if I was to put a finger on one. But all in all, I think my writing has gotten better over time. And a big key that, you know, I've tried to, you know, stick away from that was haunting me early was just the perfectionism, you know, like writing it, rereading it, rewriting it, and just being scared to put it out there because I'm like, is that the message I want to put? You know, will people read it? Is it something that I'm going to enjoy? And I think listening more to, you know, some of my, the people that I look up to in terms of blogging and just writing, and they're just like, look, publish it. You know, you're going to have bad days, you're going to have good days, but as long as you're putting work out there, then you can kind of track your progress and go along with it. Yeah, I really like that because I feel like I feel like that relates to a lot of things like just being in the creative space myself like it's it's so easy to overthink pretty much anything you do and yeah. like whether it's a video or whether it's writing like you can sit there for hours and be like okay maybe I should do it this way or maybe I should do it this way but I think sometimes the hardest part is literally just pressing post and then not not thinking about it afterwards. Um, sure. it's, just super, it's just super easy to overthink things. So is it, so writing's definitely just like an outlet for you. Like whenever something sort of pops up, do you just, do you kind of just write it, write it in your phone or a note, notebook or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I've got a couple methods, obviously if it's quick and you know, I'm on the move or I can't jot it down, I'll, I'll put it in my phone. Um, otherwise I've got a notepad, you know, which I kind of just write my thoughts and plan them out. And then I do all my writing on my computer. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an outlet and, and something that, you know, I'm definitely passionate about and just because there's so many thoughts that, you know, going up here and the more I can put them out on paper, the more I can kind of structure them and, and organize myself that way for sure. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I was just going to, um, I just wanted to talk about your one of your latest ones. I think it was your most recent one because I was reading through it today. Um, it was just titled Coping Toolkit and there was one, there was one specific part that stood out to me. Um, you probably can't guess which one it is because, um, like, which section it is. Because for many, I reckon it would probably just sound like a sort of not an ordinary statement, but not the most exciting part of the blog. Just because I feel like um, there's a lot of good stuff in there. But the thing that stood out to me was the the bit about cleaning. Do you remember what you wrote about cleaning by chance? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I can phrase it. I guess <laughs> you know how cleaning just gives me like a sense of peace and kind of. It's my coping mechanism, you know, um, mm. a clean environment helps clean, like, you know, I'm clean on the inside and my mental is clear and uh, has clarity. Is that more so along the lines? Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I've got, I've got it written down here because I, I did like the way you phrased it. So you wrote, um, where is it, where is it? 
Cleaning brings order to my mind and gives me satisfaction. Many studies have indicated that the state of your outer environment is a reflection of your inner. And I just really enjoy that because lately, I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older or something, but cleaning is literally like soothing. Like, I don't know, I just find myself whenever I'm vacuuming or cleaning anything. Like you said, you chuck some music on, chuck a chuck Shooter's podcast on, chuck something on, and it's literally like, a good feeling. So I don't know whether I'm getting old, but there's definitely something in that. No, nah, mate, it's no. definitely not a sign of getting old. You're getting wiser. Hey, I like that. I like that. The, That's good. There you go. Wisdom is cleaning. You've started it. And we all, you know, we do our goal work and our ambitions. Is is a? Do you have a long-term goal or is a? do you have a dream in this space? Write a book, make a career out of it. Is, a, is there any long-term vision you have for, a, you know, Sunday service? Yeah, for sure. Um, no, I definitely have a goal to kind of keep keep this going and, and pursuing the, the writing side. Um, I think that's definitely a, a passion of mine that I can see, you know, coming to fruition after, after playing. Um, it, in what capacity, I'm not sure. Uh, but right now, it's definitely, I'm just going to keep doing it and keep doing it as much as I can. Um, it's funny you say that. I was actually looking at uh, on seek.com at, you know, uh, <laughs> To just copywriting work here in Adelaide, which, you know, I can kind of tag along to once a month or a group or something where I can, you know, just go and, and get around other people that have a similar passion. Cause you know, I think being around in the right environment, like, like your post today, Jack is definitely key. And, um, if I can, you know, start something at, in that capacity while I'm playing will definitely be an added bonus as well. Nah, uh, that's, it's super cool because as athletes, we work so hard on a singular skill of basketball but this skill doesn't translate to anything else like you know it doesn't translate to other jobs but we require the skills at getting good at skills so like if we can apply like the discipline the dedication the our willingness to learn to fail and then keep trying uh you know working in a team like these are skills every day you know uh there's it's not a fluke that we're the top 50 in australia at what we do and I think mm -hmm. when another, an athlete learns to hone in those skills and put that to a different passion, there's no doubt that if Sunday want, said, I want to become a top 50 rider in Australia, he could achieve that. Um, and so it's exciting to see what you're doing and, and follow along and, and see where it takes you, whether it stays a fun blog that's a, a side hobby or, you know, you become one of the top 50 rider in Australia, uh, you know, only time will tell. Yeah, no, that, that would be awesome for sure. And I think, um, I, you know, I started a Twitter because of it. Uh, just there's so much information out there and just connecting with people has been awesome. And just following along your journey too, Jack, has been unreal. You know, just seeing you post consistently and sharing your thoughts and, and what, you know, what got you to where you are, you know, I think is a major key. And, and sharing that, I think we, we forget that we, we have such a wealth of experiences ourselves and, you know, we kind of, the little our journey, but that can't be the case. You know, you kind of magnify that and you got to, you know, like share your passion because it could inspire someone else, you know, and, and it's definitely true what you say that the discipline of becoming a great basketball player can be translated into any discipline and any field that you want post basketball. And I think more players need to, you know, explore that and kind of, you know, dibble and dabble in a lot of different things. Cause you never know, you, you might find something which you love, um, you know, cause I think post career was definitely something in the early days, which was tough for athletes. Now there's so many resources and so many avenues and, and it's good to see that it's growing and, you know, people are still kind of on that journey as well. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like you're, you're, you're on the money, especially with athletes, but not just athletes, everyone just dibbling and dabbling in things, finding what they like giving it a go. I don't like it. I learned from this. Let's go try something else, putting your heart into it and, and seeing where it goes. But uh, we'll, we'll leave you with one more question. You talk about passions and, and dibbling and dabbling. Oh, you got can, some? But yeah, go can ahead. I chuck a question to you guys before we, we wrap it up? I, I love this Sunday. You just, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just going to cut in and say I love it that you, you've got these you've got these questions lined up. You're like, I don't care that I'm the guest here. I want to ask you guys some questions. Go ahead. No, I'm ready, yeah. Yeah. Um, what inspired you guys to, you know, start this podcast, be a voice in the NBL circles, which, you know, hasn't been present before or if not for a very long time? Mm, Jack, I'll... Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you start us off, brother. 
Um, I think I've I've always like really wanted to find an athlete that's like passionate about starting their own podcast and just starting to talk about just general things like um and then as soon as I I'm pretty sure this started with I don't know how long ago it was I just put up an Instagram story saying does any NBL player ever think about um starting a podcast and Jack just replied saying every day and I'm like all right you sound passionate already so it kind of yeah. started like that and um I just think it's a missing space in like the Australia sporting landscape. Like you see the JJ Reddicks, yeah. you see all them in the states that do it really well, and I, I myself as a fan, just genuinely find it really cool. So I just wanted yeah. to find someone that um, did it, and it was also I didn't I was never meant to be hosting with Jack, but he was like, "Nah, I want you here. I want you here." Like I just wanted to help uh, behind the scenes, and as soon as he said yeah. that, as soon as he had faith in me, I was like, "This is a cool new challenge for me." So yeah. Jack, what about you? Yeah, it, um, I've always wanted to do it, uh, particularly basketball, because it was Draymond Green that I saw doing it, and I was like, hey, like a player, current player can do it for one. And then two, yeah. I don't love where social media basketball is trending. I think it's a pretty negative space from young kids to adults. And I just want like you know like sunday detch clamping in the post is elite you know like like the things that we're doing is tough and i think for a player to jump on and and give hype to other guys in the league and then go out and battle you know throw elbows and dive on the loose ball is like a cool thing for the sport in terms of spreading that positivity like lifting each other up and then showing how cool the nbl and basketball can be while out there competing and and being a little dirty. Uh, so, yeah. you know, we, we had the conversation and I was like, yeah, let, let's do the NBL. Let's, let's hype it up. Let's have some fun with it and uh, see where it goes. No, I, I love it. Um, Cause you know, I think I've thought about this pretty, pretty like for a long time before is why doesn't the Australian sporting world, uh, world, you know, kind of follow the American uh, persona, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot more controversy over there and, you know, people have a bit more freedom of speech per se and then, you know, able to say what they want. And I feel as though a lot over here, um, there's a lot you can't say, uh, you know, obviously in terms of certain situations, just because it, it's a small market, you know, and, and, and you'll get cancelled pretty quickly um, if you say anything controversial and whatnot. But I love the fact that it's all positive and it's uplifting because, you know, when people think of social media, they think negative right away. They think like, oh, he's not as good as him. And it's just, it's comparison culture and it's terrible, you know, because people have their flaws and people have their great points and you've got to celebrate both, you know, because it makes them who they are. And, and I really appreciate that, man, because it's like definitely a big thing in our sport where, you know, people get ragged on and, and stuff, but we, we're elite at what we do. You know, we, we do it at a high level. Um, Maybe not as great as the NBA because that's who everyone's compared to, but we're, we're great in our own right and we have to celebrate that. And it's cool that you guys have both started this and definitely honored to be here again. No, I love it. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, yeah. I was just going to say I love it. I love what you had to say then. Um, and even though you just said you may not be as good as the NBA, guys, you did beat the Phoenix Suns. Let not, let's not forget that. So <laughs> yeah, <a bit> of, <laughs> bit of bit of something over there. Um, but no, it's cool. So um, yeah, just sundayservice.page is what people should check out um it's some cool things you're doing over there and just as a fan like i said it's cool um reading what you have to say and some very wise words um yeah, over there. i think i think that's the perfect way to end uh, i think sunday sums it up um go check out his page because there's some cool things you'll learn a thing or two you'll get a little bit more insight into an mbl player uh you know you get to follow the journey of someone starting something new and, and following along with them and seeing where it takes you and them and so go check out sunday service perfect um we're gonna ask you as well just a, a few more a few more before we let you go but um is there any other hobbies you've got outside of basketball that people might not might not know about you you've obviously got the writing what else what else does sunday yeah. Lynch do when he's off time <laughs> um look i'm avid golfer uh you know i play very averagely um <laughs> myself and Hiram, one of our teammates we we try to get out once a week and it's, you know, it's just some recovery for us. We we're passionate about it and something away from basketball that we can do that kind of keeps it, you know, lighthearted because 
a lot of what we do as athletes is all competitive, right? And if you want to do something, you want to be the best at it. It's just in our nature. And golf's just been a, it's a good equalizer because it's, it's a little ball and it's very hard to hit sometimes. <laughs> so I've talked to a few, a few of my other mates around the league. I know Shay and Ruben, they're, they're big into it as well. Um, they're, they're probably a bit better than where I'm at the moment, but we've got to go out for a round soon. Wow, there you go. We should have a little uh, NBL competition to see who the best golfer in the NBL, who's the basketball slash golfer in Australia. I'm putting my money on Sunday. <laughs> you've, you've got a couple on your team, right, Jack? Yeah, we've got a couple. Uh, I know Josh Majette and Clint Steindl love it. So they'd be the two that would represent oh, the Jackies if there was a, a tournament. Man, we, we should do one. Yeah. I, can, I, I know some people. Maybe I should uh, try to tee something up. Who knows? No. Because I'm telling you, we have the Blitz every year. All the teams are in one spot. Why not? Wow, I love that. I, actually, I, I mean, next time there's something that pops up and people want to talk about how we can improve the Blitz and all that, just add a golfing tournament on the side for the people. Let's go. <laughs> uh, that is epic. Um, we always finish with something we're grateful for. Uh, Darren, would you like to start us off? Wow, this is a negative space. I'm just going to start chucking up random things I'm grateful for. This is incredible. This is the best yeah. grateful for I've ever heard. Yes, I would. Thanks for the honor. Um, yeah, it, it relates back to not my grateful for, but just this segment about how social media is always negative. So yeah, Jack bought on this segment just to just to keep the positive vibes alive. Um, mine's pretty simple this week. Um, it's just music. Grateful for music. I, I do believe there's nothing better than just driving by yourself sometimes and turn that volume up and just, just listening to whatever you're into. Um, music's a cool thing because everyone has their own, their own flavor, their own taste. Um, but that is mine. Pretty simple. Awesome. Sunday, go ahead, big fella. Man, um, yeah, I, I had a couple, but I think my my younger brothers and younger sister flew in from Perth uh, Monday night after we played you guys, Jack. Um, I'm just grateful for having them here, man. I'm grateful for family. Um, you know, it's something that when we play, we're just in our own little world and we, we neglect the love they give us and so much support throughout the season. And it's just cool to have them here and kind of see them enjoying Adelaide and, you know, appreciating the things that I've worked for and the stuff that they see, um, not only on TV, but in person. And yeah, just grateful for family. Epic, man. Epic. Uh, how long are they there for? They're here for three weeks. Awesome. Awesome. That's cool. That's, that's what you want. Family around Christmas time. Nothing gets better. Yeah, nothing better. Um, I'll finish this off. Um, this is a weird little grateful, but I'm grateful for like people that do little Christmas gifts. Like I got a nice little Christmas bag from our, our manager, OG, uh, Mark Chivers. So shout out to little like party bags and little Christmas bags and little cute little things like that. Christmas spirit. Love it. Man, let's go. Christmas. Keep it going. And we're, that's a good segue. We're grateful for you being our first guest and joining this, uh, joining our show. Um, yeah, like you said, we're, well, like we said, we're enjoying this little project on the side and it's really cool just to be able to grab someone else in. We don't always have to talk to each other, me and Jack, so yeah. adding someone else to the party is, it was really fun. I, I enjoyed yeah, thanks. probably my first ever interview. <laughs> no, I appreciate you guys, man. I'm definitely honored to be the first guest and I'm excited for the next time I'm on, man. It's, it was fun and it's cool to, you know, talk about other things, you know, in other realms as well. And I'll, uh, I'll have some more questions for you guys next time as well. Hey, you're, you're welcome back on literally any time you want. Some of the, we talked about the states having their own podcast. Some of them have correspondence, they like to call it. So, hey, yes. jump on whenever you want. Jump on whenever yeah. you want. If you need one in Adelaide, let me know. There, there you have it, guys. Sunday, Dej, thank you so much. Go check out Sunday service. And our first guest was incredible. Have a great day, guys. Share it and see.